Hey, what's happening, people? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well, and welcome to another Chelsea News video where I will be talking to you about two news stories. Well, one's a news story and one's more of a talking point. The news story being about how N'Golo Kante has waved away, rejected, said no to Paris Saint-Germain for a potential transfer, moving back to his home city in Paris, and when interviewed, explained why he's very happy at Chelsea, and we look a little bit more into that. And the talking point is on Kepa Aritha Balaga. Aritha Balaga. Aritha Balaga. I think that's it. And look at the Chelsea goalkeeper's poor form and how people are criticising him generally as a player. But really, he is a very talented young goalkeeper. And I want to remind you, the viewer, that and talk to you a little bit about his performances and stats, I guess. I want to take a moment to thank all of you guys who have been watching Yam plays and keeping up with the Chelsea career mode FIFA 20 series. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty epic, hilarious, and it's getting to the... Uh, dramatic climax of the first season so make sure you click the link in the top of the description and go check out yam plays oh yeah subscribe to this channel if you're new hit the bell notifications icon like the video help your bro out and let's get into this chelsea video you know what let's start with kepa alisa balaga the world record fee for a goalkeeper Chelsea's buyout clause Spaniard, he's been in poor form, or certainly notably low confidence. Now I say that there's a couple of saves recently or throughout the season that people are thinking, hmm, maybe Kepa should have done better there, but probably more notably, he's making silly, peculiar mistakes, passing out to a centre-back when he really shouldn't be with too much venom on the pass or not looking at what the opposition strikers are doing. Kind of textbook basic stuff that you wouldn't expect from any Premier League goalkeeper. He's conceded a lot of shots he's faced as well, although I'm reluctant to criticise him too much for that because that's got a lot to do with Chelsea's systemic flaws. You know, when a keeper gets carved open, the ball gets crossed and tapped in, often, you know, well, that's not the keeper's fault, that's a defensive issue. So, Kepa has made mistakes, we can all see it and people are talking about it, so there's not much more to comment on that, but I want to look on the other side of the coin and remind people that really, he's a very good goalkeeper. First off, a reminder that Kepa Ruta Balaga is Spain's number one goalkeeper who has recently dethroned David De Gea. On form, David De Gea is probably still the best shot stopping goalkeeper in the world. Obviously De Gea had a really poor World Cup and he's not the best at doing other goalkeeping things like distribution, claiming, coming off his line. He's just an amazing shot stopper when he's on form. But like any other goalkeeper, he's still prone to the odd howler. I mean, we've seen Edison and Allison make the odd peculiar mistake here and there. Hell, even Oblak. And probably Ter Stegen at one point. Anyway, I digress. So, being a footballing goalkeeper, or better with his feet, Kepa is Spain's number one because he suits that possession attacking style better. And that's really the reason why Chelsea bought him. Last season, Kepa finished the Premier League season with an 86% passing accuracy in a team that made a lot of passes. So obviously it's a very good pass percentage rate and they weren't all short passes, he can pass long as well. Compare that to Edison, who's the Premier League champions goalkeeper who had 83% pass accuracy, who also see a lot of the ball as a team. He's always been this kind of profile of goalkeeper Kepa. So yes, good of his feet. He's good at rushing off his line and sweeping when in confidence, but he is still a very good shot stopper as well. Sure, he's only 6-1 I think, so he can't often reach the very far corners of the goal, but he is still got these cat-like reflexes and let's not forget that he has had some clutch performances, not least the semi-final in the Europa League last season when he was the penalty shootout hero, making two saves, and one of those wicked ones when he got it down on his knee that was just superb. Even this season, he's come up with some big, big important saves. He's made a couple of last sort of second saves in games which saved the points for the team, so he has still got it on his locker, concentration to the end, and he's got the ability to be a great footballing goalkeeper, great at coming out sweeping, combined good shot stopper, good distribution generally, but like I said, it comes down to what he's performing like recently, and there is that poor confidence and these peculiar passes and weird moments. For me, this comes down to goalkeeping coaches. Frank Lampard wanted Shea Given to come to the club as a new goalkeeper coach, and really, it does look like they need to shake something up to get the best out of him. Fortunately, Kepa is a really strong character. He's very passionate. I think that's half the reason why Chelsea signed him. He had the right kind of player profile psychologically, 
to succeed in the Premier League. You can't be too passive when playing in English football. People spoke of how disrespectful it was, and it was when he refused to come off when Sarri tried to substitute him, but generally he's a passionate goalkeeper. He's all in, he wants to play for Chelsea, and he wants to be the best he can be, and he's Spain's number one. So really, I've backed him to get his confidence back and perform at the highest level again, but in my opinion, Chelsea need to do a little shakedown in goalkeeping coaches at the club. Watch this space and hopefully there's some positive development there and his fine form returns. Anyway, let's get into the next story in Golo Kante. The world's best interceptive destroyer midfielder who has developed into a bit more of an all-rounder. Paris Saint-Germain have long wanted in Golo Kante at the Parc de France, but he is happy or he's been sort of... Even if he's been thinking about it, we're not too sure about these stories. He's very, very happy in London and very happy at Chelsea. N'Golo Kante is from Paris. He grew up there and he's a Parisian kid and PSG are a massive club and they'd pay you loads of money and you'd win domestic title after domestic title. Remember, Kante's won the Premier League twice with two different teams. He's won the FA Cup, the Europa League. Hell, he's won the World Cup. You think, hmm, he's late 20s now, pushing 29. Maybe he'll fancy some recurring league earned titles to add to his trophy cabinet. You can see why that would be tempting, especially with crazy money. Money. But actually, Chelsea offered him crazy money. I think he's on 290k a week at the moment at Chelsea, which is by far the most a player is on, on the Chelsea books. But I think everyone would all agree that out of all the players at Chelsea, the most talented player, N'Golo Kante, probably deserves it. Recently, N'Golo Kante brushed away the PSG rumours once again when he had an interview with Canal. Kante said, Sometimes we don't necessarily know where we want to go, but we know what we have. I know, I was in Chelsea and I was good there. If I did not want to come to PSG, it was more of a sporting choice. I felt good in London, in the project, and I was happy to stay there. Great to hear from Kante, and if you think of the project, it kind of makes sense. Especially with him individually as a player. Sure, he was tenacious, and he's, like I said, the best interceptive box-to-box -box midfielder in the world at the moment, but his game has developed under Lampard, and indeed, under Maurizio Sarri. Last season, N'Golo Kante got eight league goal contributions, and in the Premier League this season, he's been out with injury most of the time, but he has three goals in his last four starts. That's like attacking midfielder, if not forward numbers, but really, he's been so, so integral to Chelsea playing well, generally. Look at the recent performance against Manchester City. He was on fire. He was the team progressing the attack forward with decent ball progression. But of course, he was still being a superb interceptive midfielder. As a player, you have to love this. You know what you're good at, but you're developing new and exciting parts of your game. You're scoring goals. Remember, he used to score a goal and just run back to the centre circle. He didn't know what to do. Now he's got a big smile on his face and he's like, you know what, man? I'm getting used to this, you know? I'm going to start celebrating. I've scored goals. Bless him. And I know it's something that I've said before, but I will reiterate it again. Ngola Kante is a midfielder now playing under Frank Lampard. Whether you're Kovacic, Jorginho, Mason Mount, Ross Barkley, or even Ngola Kante, you have to be hyped to be playing under and being coached by Frank Lampard himself. So it all makes sense. It makes sense why I'd want to stay at Chelsea, why I'd want to brush off the Paris Saint-Germain links. He probably believes he can win more stuff at Chelsea in an exciting direct team. Another thing worth noting as well is there's huge pressures at Paris Saint-Germain. Sure, they win the league every year, but they're under immense scrutiny if they don't do well in the Champions League season by season. Chelsea, at the moment certainly, the pressure's off. Do what you want, play exciting attacking football under lamps. You don't need to win the league, no one's expecting you to win the league. Whatever you do, everyone's impressed at the moment because you're playing with the academy kids, you're playing exciting football, you've got a young charismatic coach who was one of the best goal scoring midfielders of all time. Lovely scenes and living in London ain't so bad either, right? So it does look like Kente is here to stay, which is nice, especially if he can keep performances up into his early 30s and have a lot to give and keep away from injuring himself again. Anyway, let me know what you think. Get down in the comments below and express your thoughts and opinions on both N'Golo Kante and of course Kepa Aretha Balaga how you feel about his form and development moving forwards. Get down in the comments, let me know your thoughts. If you've liked the content today, please do like the video. Remember to go check out Yan Plays, the gaming channel, and watch some FIFA episodes. Also, you can follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, everyone. I hope you lot enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. 
In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby